Towards the end of 2015, a giant gypsy from Great Britain defeated Ivan Drago in Dusseldorf, Deutschland, and no one cared. Why didn't anyone care? Because the world had given up on heavyweight boxing. If you don't follow boxing much, I'll break it down for you. The 1970s gave us the greatest generation of heavyweights. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Ken Norton, Ernie Shavers. These guys fought outside of the 1970s as well, but that decade was the golden age of heavyweight fights. Then things got boring until Mike Tyson came along. Tyson was knocking everyone out. Then he messed up and fired his trainer, Kevin Rooney. Didn't train as much or as well after that. Got the crap beat out of him by Buster Douglas. Almost as bad as I used to beat him in Punch-Out. He went to prison, tried to make a comeback. Wasn't the same. Long story short, he bit Evander Holyfield's ear off. Holyfield and Lennox Lewis kept things going for a little while, but they just weren't as exciting as Iron Mike. Then, out of nowhere, a bunch of giant Russians, all of them named Ivan Drago, invaded the world of professional boxing, and things got boring. Why are Russian fighters so boring? I don't know. They come from a boring country that produces boring fighters. Suddenly, in 2015, Tyson Fury defeated one of the Ivan Dragos and took the belts back to Great Britain, another country that produces boring fighters. I didn't watch the fight. It was called the upset of the year. Bull. No one was upset because no one cared. And no one was really surprised. Ivan Drago was like a thousand years old. It was only a matter of time and vodka before someone won via decision. Boring. But here's where things get interesting. Even though heavyweight boxing was boring by 2015, Tyson Fury was not boring. I didn't know it yet because I wasn't paying attention. Tyson Fury was named after Mike Tyson, not because his dad planned for him to become a heavyweight champion of the world, like everyone thinks, but because he was born three months premature, weighing one pound. The doctors told his parents that he wasn't going to make it. But he made it, and his dad said, this kid's a fighter, and named him Tyson. A few months after winning the WBA, WBO, IBF, and IBO titles, Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King, shared my testimony video on Twitter. The link is to a mirrored version on someone else's channel. The thumbnail says, serial killer testimony. I was not a serial killer. I would have been, but I went to prison and became a Christian. Now, I had no idea why Tyson Fury shared my testimony video. Later, it all made sense. Fury has been battling mental illness for much of his life. After he beat Ivan Drago, he got worse. So he was watching videos of people who had mental health problems but overcame them. Fury deteriorated for a while. He stopped training. He gained a ton of weight. He went out drinking every night. He was snorting cocaine. He said he didn't want to wake up in the morning. He didn't want to live. He said that if he hadn't been a Christian, he would have killed himself in a second and that he was hoping someone else would kill him before he killed himself so that he wouldn't go to hell. He was declared medically unfit to fight. All of his belts were taken away. End of story. So much for the rise and fall of the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. But then he came back, and in just his third fight into his comeback, he fought one of the greatest knockout artists ever. Fury was a defensive master, so it was one of the greatest knockout artists ever against one of the greatest defensive fighters ever. And for the first time in a long time, the heavyweight division was no longer boring. I usually prefer knockout artists. They're more fun to watch than defensive fighters. But it's hard not to root for Tyson Fury, given where he's come from. Apart from that, Fury is... Fun to watch. He's six foot nine, but bounces around like a lightweight. In round 12, Deontay Wilder caught him with a punch that would have ended the fight with anyone else on the planet. 
and he did knock Fury out for a few seconds. But Fury woke up and got up. The fight was declared a draw. After the fight, Fury gave credit where credit is due. First things first, I just want to say thank you to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, I got through tonight. And after he got dressed, he told the world why he did it. I just showed the world tonight, everyone suffering with mental health, that you can come back and it can be done. Everybody out there who has the same problems that I've been suffering with, I did that for you guys. You know the truth. Everybody knows I won that fight. And if I can come back from where I come from, then you can do it too. So get up, get over it, and let's do it. Seek help, and let's do it together as a team. I did it for you guys. So, back in 2016, Tyson Fury was looking for videos about people with mental health problems who had triumphed over those mental health problems. In 2019, Tyson Fury pointed to himself as someone with mental health problems who had triumphed over those mental health problems. But he wasn't done. There was the rematch with undefeated WBC champion Deontay Wilder. Fury entered the ring on a palanquin manned by a bunch of Amazons while singing Crazy by Patsy Cline. Wilder made his entrance wearing an outfit that looked like Elton John had designed an Iron Man suit for a Mad Max movie. Fury had been claiming in the weeks leading up to the fight that he was going to go after Wilder and knock him out. He even said that he would knock Wilder out in the second round. No one believed him. Everyone thought that he was just trying to disguise his real plans. A brilliant defensive master doesn't sit there and trade punches with a knockout artist. But he did what he said. He was wrong about the second round, but he went straight for Wilder and started trading punches. And Fury beat Wilder into a bleeding, wobbly mess. Fury was covered with blood, but it wasn't his blood. It was blood spatters from him beating Wilder senseless. Just to show you how bad this was, here's some footage of Wilder when he got home. Swelling going down. <laughs> so, the greatest defensive heavyweight of our generation turned into a brawler and took down the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Now, think about this. Less than four years ago, Tyson Fury was losing his mind and he saw death as his only way out. He was watching YouTube videos looking for stories of people who won their battles with mental illness. He was searching for encouragement, something to help him believe that things could get better. Here we are in 2020, and Tyson Fury has become the world's leading example of a man who's overcoming mental illness. He's the one that people who are struggling with mental health problems will now look to when they're feeling hopeless and suicidal. Just to be clear, there are degrees of mental illness. Some people need to be in psychiatric hospitals. Some people need medication. Some people need therapy. But there are lots of people in the world who go through dark periods in life, and they just need to know that they can get through those dark periods. And when they think about someone like Tyson Fury, they realize if he got through it, then it's possible to get through it. And if it's possible, then I can get through it. And that might be just the sort of help they need to keep going. So hats off to Tyson Fury for winning the WBC belt, but even more so for winning the OMI belt, the Overcoming Mental Illness belt. Fury's journey isn't over. He may continue to struggle with bipolar disorder and depression, but he's surrounded by people who love him. He's got a lot to look forward to. And most importantly, he knows who his Lord is. The Gypsy King knows the King of Kings. So things are looking good for him right now. If you'd like to check out my video that Fury shared back in 2016, the one on my channel, not the bootleg version, 
The link is in the description box. On a slightly related note, where you at, Anthony Joshua? Don't forget the Warriors Creed. It's better to fight and lose than not to fight.